Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Uh, my name is Zach Tresh, and I am the legit love child of Bob Ross and Richard Simmons. <laughs> that is how I usually open most of my comedy sets, but tonight is a little different. I am a stand-up comedian, musician, actor, improv performer, DJ, talk show host, the flu bug, <laughs> apparently TED Talk lecturer, and I have anxiety and depression. And all of these things have helped me cope with my mental health struggle. My name is Zach Dresch, and this is how to thrive when you're an anxious mess. Growing up, I, uh, was gr I grew up here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I was a, uh, a nervous and shy kid, <laughs> and apparently an awful photo taker. <laughs> Look at that kid, holy crap. <laughs> I, uh, I was terrified of getting in trouble. I was considered a goody two-shoes in my eyes. You know, there's badasses, I was more of a good ass. As a G-A-M-F, I'm not gonna swear that much. Um, but no, I was always not wanting to get in trouble because of fear of my reputation being at stake at the age of eight. It's crazy. I actually would go to sleepovers and the parents would take the kids aside and tell them what they expected of the children and I never got called because I was that well behaved. Um, around the age of 11, I started getting a lot more worrisome. I'd have panic attacks a lot. And I would always wonder, why is this happening to me? Until my parents took me to a psychiatrist, and it turns out I have generalized anxiety disorder. And uh, a lot of things shortly thereafter were really tests of my anxiety, um, one being the death of my grandfather, who I was really close to, who was a role model in my eyes that I looked up to. I kind of view that as the end of my childhood and the beginning of my adolescence and my future. Um, a way to cope with that, I started playing music, and I loved listening to music. I began being a drummer around the age of 11 or 12, and I started playing in bars when I was 14 and 15. <laughs> this is me at 20, I wasn't 14 there. <laughs> but I really enjoyed playing drums. I, I, that was a huge passion of mine. I loved performing. Um, but also, I wanted something a little more. I, uh, I grew up loving Saturday Night Live, Kids in the Hall, Weird Al Yankovic, Big shock, I know. Um, and I always wanted to do something a little more than that. And um, Dave Grohl was a huge influence on me because as most of you know, or some of you know, Dave Grohl was the drummer of the huge 90s band Nirvana. And when their frontman Kurt Cobain passed away in 1994, he had to pick up the pieces again. His whole career was shut down almost overnight. And after that, he decided to form his own band and be the front man of a little band called Foo Fighters, who I'm sure most of you have heard of at this point. And uh, after seeing all that happen to Dave, I thought, I don't need to just be a drummer. Maybe I could do something more than that, since I love comedy so much. This is a photo of me DJing in college. Couldn't find the millions of other photos I perform with, apparently. Um, but yeah, like I said, I was a huge SNL Kids in the Hall, Weird Al fan. But my biggest influence at this time around high school was Conan O'Brien. Yeah, Conan fans. Um, junior year of high school, I kind of had an epiphany. Um, Conan O'Brien had just taken over The Tonight Show after being on Late Night for 16 years. And he walked away from the show after seven months because NBC wanted Jay Leno back. And Conan said, I'm just gonna walk. And his last episode, he gave this really inspirational speech at the end of the show that said, nobody in life gets exactly what they thought they were going to get, but if you work really hard and you're kind, amazing things will happen. And that changed my world overnight. I decided to become more social, uh, try to perform more. I grew my hair out <laughs> to a giant fro. And I started performing in plays a lot, and I was kind of the comic relief character, and I just loved doing that so much. 
Flash forward to uh, freshman year of college, I started doing uh, improv, uh, which is something I really love. It's basically performance where you make everything up off the top of your head, kind of like the TV show Whose Line Is It Anyway? And the reason why I loved improv so much is because it took me away from my anxieties. Improv involves a lot of active listening and being in the moment and being mindful of what's going on in the scene, not of all the crap that's going on in your head. All the stuff that you're thinking about doesn't matter when you're on stage with these people. You're just engaged and you're enjoying yourself and committed to making the scene and the audience entertained. There's a lot of things that anxiety does to you. It steals your peace. It makes you second guess every single move that you make. It taints your memories and it makes you dread even the smallest things that you're looking forward to just because of some negative thought in your head. And uh, I've treated it with several different things. I, I take medication. I've gone from Zoloft to Wellbutrin to Celexa, back to Wellbutrin. Now I'm on Effexor because apparently I like change a lot. But one thing that I really loved doing was making people laugh. That was more of a drug to me than any other med possibly could do. And uh, I started writing. And my junior year of college, I uh, was at a American College Theater Festival, and I decided to uh, sign up for an open mic and do some stand-up comedy. This photo is actually the second set I ever did in 2014 at a little club called Rookies here in Sioux Falls. That was a really fun time. Three of you, cool. Uh, <laughs> Right on, we've heard of it. Uh, <laughs> my first set was at this American College Theater Festival. My first crowd was 300 people. And uh, I got up on stage, and my first thing I said was, I'm Zach Dresch, and I forgot my notes. <laughs> so I ran across the room, grabbed my phone, walked back up, and resume as normal like nothing happened, except for that I forgot my notes. And I, I use the song Tub Thumping by Chumbawamba as a lesson. <laughs> you get knocked down, but damn it, you get back up again. Yes. And I just kept doing it. I really loved performing and I loved telling jokes and I've been doing it for eight years. And uh, my last year of college, I knew I was going to be leaving college and I was a theater major, so I had no immediate future. <laughs> um, no offense. Um, but I decided, you know, I gotta do something. And stand-up was my constant throughout all of this. I, um, I just love doing it so much. And uh, I still do it to this day. I've had a lot of really cool career highs. Um, this is one of them. Um, another one, I mentioned that I'm a huge fan of Kids in the Hall. I got to perform with Kevin McDonald from Kids in the Hall about three or four years ago. So that was huge for me. But of course, I still have those same anxieties that I used to have when I was a kid. If you have a bad set that really hits you pretty hard, you've, your whole day is ruined. Um, I feel like I'm being laughed at instead of with sometimes, and um, I just I struggle with body image. I used to be about 200 pounds when I started doing stand-up. Now I'm about 320, and I've struggled with that for, for a long time. And what do you do about it? You write jokes about it. You tell jokes about it. I tell a joke on stage about how I stepped on the scale and I weigh the same as a perfect score in bowling. <laughs> Plus 40. It's a, way, it's a form of therapy that I think really, really works. Other things I struggle with, I overbook myself, which is a good problem to have, but you gotta tell people no, and I don't like disappointing people, and that really stresses me out. And balancing my time is a struggle. My girlfriend also deals with anxiety and depression. We both help each other and work through everything, and it just, it just becomes an issue, and you compare yourself to everyone else, especially comedians. There are so many comics out there that I think, I'll never be that funny. They are so much better. But you just gotta work through it and just figure it out. There's a lot of famous comics that deal with anxiety and depression. Some deal with it more successfully than others. There's a lot of comedians that didn't make it because they coped with substance abuse, like John Belushi and Chris Farley passed away from it due to drug overdoses. Some have done it by suicide. You've got Richard Jenny, Freddie Prince, Brody Stevens, and most, most prominently, Robin Williams. And I think when Robin Williams died of suicide, that was one of those where the curse had been broken, the stigma kind of ended about talking about mental health, especially with performers in the public eye. 
And uh, I think it's really important to uh, talk to people and t tell them how, how you're feeling. Don't be afraid to keep things, don't bottle things up, just tell people what you're struggling with. Pat Oswalt once said, a lot of comedians are people that are very introverted, very shy, very sensitive to humiliation. The only way to combat it is to go to the one place where you are stripped bare. And I think it's kind of weird how we're afraid of a lot of things in life, but one thing we're not afraid of is talking in front of hundreds of people. It's kind of a weird, <laughs> weird thing. Like my favorite thing in the world is to go to a bar on a slow night and host a comedy open mic because people just want to eat, want to eat and drink their damn beer in peace. <laughs> really love messing up their night, you know. <laughs> but how do? What do I think we should do? I think we should end the stigma and talk about it way more than we already are. We we need to not keep things quiet. If you're if you're feeling like a failure in life, tell people about it. Don't keep it all bottled up. Don't act like your life is so perfect on Facebook, Instagram, or Tinder, I don't know. Um, honesty is the, best, is the best policy, in my opinion. And I'm so grateful for all my friends and family, my comedy family especially. We're the ones that all go to these open mics and crash it and piss off random guy at the bar. It's, it's my favorite thing in the world still. Seriously, come check us out. Um, but no, finally, I just want to say how I'm feeling today. Pretty good, but not every day is, is awesome. There's days where I feel like I'm questioning how I'm feeling every single day. Going through a lot of med changes right now that are not fantastic. Just last week, I had a breakdown. It wasn't fantastic because I've just been going through a lot of med changes and it's not an overnight thing where you immediately feel better. You have to work through it. There's constant side effects. Um, like dehydration and nausea and all that stuff. And I guess that's the beauty of life is no one's ever going to have all the answers. And if they say they have the answers, they suck. <laughs> um, I don't like hanging out with those people. <laughs> my people are the people that have faults. They're my favorite people because we can talk about these kind of things. We don't compare, we compare ourselves to people, but in a healthy way, I suppose. But finally, um, I encourage you to find your thing that makes you passionate. Find your comedy, find your music, find your art, find your extreme couponing, <laughs> your soap carving, your extreme ironing. I looked up odd hobbies on Google. Um, <laughs> but if they're, if they're awesome to you, then they're not odd. You know what I mean? Don't be a prisoner of your expectations. And most importantly, don't let your anxiety define you. <laughs>